Hi, welcome back to Grammar and Thongs and our second lesson on nominalization. In our first video on nominalization, I was telling you that this is a little handy tip to make your writing better. And by that I mean we pack more meaning into your writing when we use nominalization. So it's particularly good for analytical writing uh, and other writing in academic or school settings. It's not good for everything and I'll talk about that later. So why would we want to nominalize? Remember, nominalization is taking verbs and adjectives and turning them into nouns. There's lots of reasons why we might want to nominalize, and I'm going to talk about three of them now. The first one is that it removes the participant from what you're writing about. So it takes out the human agency, and that can be particularly important in something like a science or lab report in science, where we don't want to focus on the scientists, we want to focus on the results. So here's an example in that sort of setting. We've got this sentence here, I added the baking soda to the vinegar, they reacted and bubbles were formed. So it's very active and it's got the first person pronoun I in there. So let's nominalize and get rid of that human agency. So instead of I added the baking soda, we can take the verb of adding and turn it into the noun, the addition of baking soda, and that gets rid of the I. The addition of baking soda to vinegar and then they reacted and bubbles were formed. So we could say caused, well, we've got the verb to react, and the noun version of that is reaction. So caused a chemical reaction. Can go here. That resulted in, and the bubbles were formed, we've got up here. So instead of the verb to form, we'll make it the noun formation. The formation. of bubbles. So now we've got a much more academic, scientific, technical sounding uh, explanation of the process in the lab thanks to nominalization. The second really good reason to use nominalization is that it expresses complex processes that might involve a series of actions with one single noun. And so that helps to pack meaning into our language. Uh, we do this all the time in science with examples including photosynthesis. Um, or something like global warming that would take a long time to explain, but we can express it with one noun. Uh, here's another example here. A process that began in Britain and saw the change from an agrarian and handicraft economy to one dominated by industry and machine manufacturing. Well, what we're talking about here, of course, is the Industrial Revolution. Okay, so a single noun that expresses all of that information. And that brings us to our third really good reason to use nominalization, and that is what I've spoken about already, that it packs more meaning into our words. So we can do that through this process of expressing complex processes with a single noun, but it can also do it by expressing abstract ideas succinctly, and that's what I want to show you next. Okay, the third and final really good reason, as I said, is it expresses abstract ideas succinctly. So I'm talking about ideas that would take a long time to try and explain, but we have developed through language ways to express those in one noun. So words like love. So it's not a noun as in something we can pick up, a concrete noun, but it certainly is a noun, an abstract noun. And it would take a long time to try and explain what love is. Words like faith. Um, words to go back to science like gravity. In fact, we can even use it to express an idea that we may grapple with expressing and making sense of at all. So, for example, something like dark matter is something that scientists struggle to explain, but we can express what we mean by it with one simple noun. What this is doing is packing more meaning into our words, and that's what we call lexical density, and I'd like to talk to you about that in my next video. Thank you.